So that was just sort of teasing out the effects of smoking and age, but there were a lot of other things measured. And you might think, well, one thing we might want to do is to try and create a model to predict the risk of death based on all these other factors. So that might be an objective that we've, we've got. But we need to consider that quite carefully. You've got lots of variables. One possibility is to throw them all in the model, but um, that could lead to sort of overfitting and you've got irrelevant measurements in the model that can cause noise. So that isn't necessarily the best thing to do. So there's different options to how you can go ahead with this. I mean, potential strategies, as I said, you could include all variables in the model, but that's not usually the best one, particularly if you've got a lot of variables. You could just decide, well, I think these variables are associated with mortality, so these are the ones I'll pop into the model. That's one option. An approach that gets used quite a lot is something called forward selection, and in this you would sort of select variables in order of their significance, one by one, until none of them have a p-value less than a set limit. And that limit doesn't have to be 0.05. It doesn't, they don't have to be significant to go in the model. It could be something like 0.2, but it depends how sure you want to be that the value is, the measurement is contributing to the prediction. There's also an alternative approach called backward selection. And in that, you put all the variables in to start with, and then you delete them one by one in order, decreasing order of the p-values. So the largest, one with the largest p-value would take out of the model, refit it, and then take the next measurement with the next largest p-value until all the p-values are less than a set limit, which, as I say, it's up to you to set. It doesn't have to be 0 0.05. I'm usually, sort of a, it's a small value, but it doesn't necessarily have to be at the level of statistical significance. And there are mixtures of sort of forwards and backwards selection, um, which sometimes gets called stepwise selection, where you sort of go forwards, put variables in, and then if you find one becomes, the p-value gets too small, you take it out, go backwards and forwards until you get to a model. But none of these are sort of, there's not any definite best way of selecting variables. There are also other ways of variable selection people have suggested, but it depends on a lot of things also how many variables you've got. If you've got only a few variables, you might want to go straight to putting them all in the model or backward selection. If you've got a huge number of variables, forward selection might be more sensible. Yeah, there's different strategies for sort of creating a predictive model. So if we first of all look, yeah, we could put all the variables in. So there's 25, I haven't even got them all on here. Put them all in. The problem is those that have got, there's quite a few that have got low p-values, probably because they're associated with other variables, you know, we're not able to show them as having much effect. And they're, they're probably just going to add noise to the data. So this isn't a particularly good strategy, particularly as we've got quite a large number of variables. We could do um, forward selection. So if we try doing, we'll sort of use this as the strategy for this data set. And so if this, when this was done, then only four of the, um, the, I think it was 25 potential variables was included in the model. And I'd set the p-value to 0 0.01. So they didn't have to be statistically significant. But as it turned out, the four variables that did get included were statistically significant. So uh, we had age, gender, peripheral vascular disease came out, even after adjusting for these age and gender, and smoking as well came out. So with these four variables, we were able to obtain what we might consider to be our best predictive model for this particular data set. So the logistic regression equation came out like this. These are the sort of actual numbers in the, in the model, which are taken as these estimates. And sometimes people will use that as a score. You can just add up this equation, you get a score, and the, the higher the score, then the more likely the patient is to, to die. But you can translate that back into the odds of dying if you want to. And SAS also gave the odds ratios showing the contribution of each of the um, effects fitted in the model. So you can see, in fact, having peripheral vascular disease was the most highest odds ratio, so that was quite risky. 
but independently of that, smoking is still risky. Being male is risky, unfortunately, and getting older is risky. So.